Hello, welcome to Art Conspiracy. I'm Amy and you're in the conspiracy of art. Um, hey, listen, um, I ran across a problem as artists do. I always say uh, art education in schools is really important because art is problem solving. You know, you, you create a problem for yourself and you try to fix it. My problem today or recently is, was puddles, was trying to draw and watercolor puddles. Anyway, uh, I'm teaching this class and we're doing simplified figures. Simplified meaning big chunks, no faces and hands or feet, no small parts. So I had this idea to do a figure under an umbrella which would hide a lot of the head, you know, the detail of the head. Also the transparency of the umbrella was something that we were gonna play with and led me to think, okay, it's a wet environment and maybe they're walking through some puddles. And I thought, well, how hard can that be? You know, puddles are basically like little ponds and um, we've done that. We've done water and reflection in water. So I looked at some uh, models as we do, did my homework and forged ahead and had some problems with the puddles. <laughs> so I'm revisiting uh, and bringing you along for the ride, uh, re re revisiting for my class. So let me um, share with you a couple of things. Uh, oh, Hold on a second. I did that wrong. Got to share. Here we go. Okay, so here was the drawing that kind of um, inspired this. I did this a long time ago. Little drawing. Um, that's me walking down the street in Penang, Malaysia. But it was this idea of the very simplified figure. So uh, uh, we practice drawing the proportion of the whole figure, which was new for the class. We had only done sort of the top half so far and we extended it. And then we played with how to draw an umbrella. And uh, I, the way I teach my classes is I almost never have us work from one source, like especially one photo. We're not gonna copy a photo. So we usually have um, multiple sources. And so anyway, we played and learned how to use ellipses to draw an umbrella. And then we talked about the puddles, which is kind of interesting. Puddles are these kind of crazy shapes. They can be, it can be pretty expressive about what shapes they take. And what I noticed about puddles is they have really, uh, because of the reflection, they have light, light and dark, dark. And then what's around them is very gray and sort of matte. You know, this feels shiny because it's water, but it's, it's really just an illusion. It's because you get the light, light and the dark, dark, right? And then this is middle. And they also have sometimes have like a white, little shiny area, white area around the edge where it's where the water hasn't quite evaporated. You know, it's in between the water and the drier part. So I looked at puddles, see, just like kind of cool shapes and they reflect what's above. And then this was the cityscape that we used um, as our background. And again, you can see ref clear reflection, sort of a matte middle value part where the puddle is not. So we forged ahead. I forged ahead. Here's my thumbnail. I almost always do a thumbnail, which is like a little map, a little working out my ideas for, for the watercolor. This thing is about three inches high. And I'm pretty happy with this. I think the ground looks wet. Feels wet to me. Got a little reflection going on. You got light and dark and get the buildings. And anyway, that was pretty good. So then we jumped in and here is my demo. Now, what happened with the puddles here? I mean, kind of, you can see there the puddles, maybe because she's holding an umbrella and because we're talking about puddles. And so you're, you're going to see, but I don't know, it looks like it could just be like rocks. And, and I'm thinking, okay, what, what is wrong with my puddles? And I, this is the whole idea of this video is what the heck is wrong with my puddles and how can I fix this? And what I realized, but it wasn't enough to have the light and dark contrast. I have that but I don't have specific shapes to the puddles and I don't have them clearly reflecting anything above or in the cityscape in this case, right? So I needed to solve those problems. So let me show you how I attack to this. So I did another sketch, pretty little sketch and here, and 
a little bit more stylized, but a very specific cityscape. And I have the reflection in the bottom half. And often when I do a reflection, whether it's a lake or, uh, you know, glass or whatever, uh, I, I'll turn it sideways because it sort of abstracts it and you can see the symmetry of, of the image. And it's kind of fun to play with. And you can see I totally left out the puddles. I just did a straight drawing showing the reflections. And I also figured out like, this is sky, not building, because I'm gonna have color in the puddle and I want it to relate to the color up here. So I, I tried to get really clear and where are my lights? Like here's a light shape on the building. Here will be a corresponding light shape. Here's the light shape, here's the light shape. Here's a little light shape, L shape. Here's a little light shape. So I figured that part out. Then I took a piece of tracing paper and I figured out where my puddles were going to be. And I saw, okay, what information is going to actually show up in my puddles? And one of the things I decided was to make this puddle bigger, just to give you more information, ref more reflection to make the puddle, uh, to sell it better, you know, to make it more substantial. And when I went to uh, work on my piece, I also occasionally would just slip in this white piece of paper between the two and it very clearly showed the edges of my puddle. So that was my analysis. And uh, I, got, I gotta tell you, let me switch here for a second. One of the things I love about being an artist is I feel a little bit like a scientist or like a researcher, like a writer. When you know, when you go to write something, you end up having to do homework and figure out, you know, what things look like and smell like. And I, artists do the same thing, you know. Like I, I'm here, I am trying to figure out the, you know, what makes a puddle look like a puddle. <laughs> anyway, it's it's pretty fun. So back to the screen chair. So here I am, and my first task was to make the puddles more specific, which I did. I just used a pencil and my watercolor, and I redefined, and you can see I made my, I decided to make my uh, puddle at the bottom bigger, because I wanted, see that light there? That reflects this light up here. So I think I added that light in, added in some lights right away, right after I defined my puddles. And then this is a pretty big shift. Look at this. I basically thought, again, if I'm gonna sell it and I'm gonna have a real specific reflection, I need more color, more definite color in the reflection and in the building. So I added real specific color. I did use a little bit of gouache because it's more opaque and I, I needed it to really override and be a little bit lighter than what was there. So I, I made it with gouache and I, put the corresponding colors down here. And I think that looks pretty good. I also added a little bit more color inside the umbrella. So that again, reflected down here, that would have more pigment. And then I think the last thing I did was I darkened the side of uh, her dress a little bit, just to make what you're seeing through the transparent umbrella a little bit more different than what's down here. So let me show you the two of them. I think that's a pretty big jump. Um, so I hope that is helpful to my students who I will send this video to. And I hope you enjoyed just seeing it with me. And let me put on my antlers because I wanna say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, whatever you might be celebrating. Here's to having a great year next year, 2020. And uh, keep painting, keep sketching, stay safe out there. Greetings from Thailand. And um, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye from Art Conspiracy. Oh, interested in classes or questions or whatever. My website is artconspiracy.net. Not .com. That'll take you someplace strange. .net, artconspiracy.net. Okay. Ho, ho, ho.